So you stumbled on a big pile of cash and you don't know what to do with it? And coincidentally, it's also time to change your video card? Well then, in that case, ASUS might have the perfect solution for you with the Republic of Gamers branded GTX 1080 Strix. Hey, what is going on guys, Mr. Halo here and it's time to see what this beast can do for you. Nvidia poked the hornet's nest a few months ago when they announced the GTX 1080, the GTX 1070 and teased their performance compared to the previous generation of graphics cards. However, with really low stocks of 1080s and price gouging, it's still pretty hard to get one for its actual MSRP or at least close to it. After months of waiting, I finally got my hands on this beauty and it's time to see what's the deal with the Pascal architecture and if the performance teased is true or not. The card features DirectCU3 cooling where the heat pipes have direct contact with the GPU and in combination with the triple wing blade fans it delivers a 30% cooler and up to 3 times quieter graphics card. Besides having a graphics card that runs at low temperatures, you also get a backplate with a neat looking design, an ROG logo and of course RGB lighting. With the help of Aura, you can customize the LEDs on the back and front of the graphics card with different colors and effects and even sync it with other Aura enabled devices. When it comes to the ASUS 1080, there are three versions of the Strix out there. The 8G Gaming, the A8G Gaming and the O8G Gaming, however, the only difference between them is the base and boost clocks, but we'll get into that a bit later. Tech specs wise it looks similar to all other 1080s out there with 2560 CUDA cores, a 256 bit memory interface, 8 gigs of GDDR5X memory clocked at 1010 MHz and for this card in particular a GPU base clock of 1607 MHz and a boost clock of 1733 MHz. The fact that it comes with an 8 and a 6 pin power connector means you can pump more power into it and push the GPU clock past 2100 MHz right? Well, well, no, but more on that in a bit. For connectivity, ASUS ditched one of the three display ports in favor of an additional HDMI compared to the Founders 1080. So what you get is a DVI connector, two HDMI ports and two display ports. This is perfect if you're stuck on using an HDMI monitor or TV and intend to attach a VR headset in the near future in the other HDMI port. But hello, you can use the display port cable to hook up a VR headset to the 1080. Well, yes you can, but at the time of this review it won't work as there's a bug that Nvidia is aware of and hopefully being addressed. A nifty addition of two 4 pin connectors to the graphics card allows you to add and control extra case fans based on the card temperatures, however considering how chill this beast runs even overclocked, you're probably never going to use them. Simply stating that the graphics card is impressive when jumping from a GTX 780 is a bit of an understatement and having the ability to push it even further makes it all worthwhile. Because there is no BIOS switch, ASUS GPU Tweak 2 is the tool you need to enable the OC mode of the card which adds an extra 30 MHz to the GPU clock and pushes the power target by 10%. By default the card is configured to run in gaming mode and as an alternative you can go for silent mode which just cuts some of the performance. However thanks to the GPU Boost 3.0 the card's boost clock jumps directly to 1080 MHz right out of the box. Now with that Overclocking out of the way, I've managed to push the card even further to a safe area of 2050 MHz for the GPU and 10900 MHz for the memory. It safely goes a bit above that, but I like to keep it a bit below that threshold to avoid any unwanted issues later on. I have to give props to ASUS for the cooling tech behind the graphics card because I've been amazed how well it keeps it silent and cool. With temps around upper 60s in full load and around 72 when overclocked, after long gaming sessions, the card completely stops all the fans when it doesn't have anything to munch on. The noise levels are around 42 decibels at 50% fan speed and around 62 decibels when manually tuned to 100%. Ok, enough chit chat and b-rolls, it's time for the benchmarks.
Right, so you've seen the benchmarks, the build quality, the specs and the thermals, and you've probably drawn a conclusion yourself. But here's mine. The Asus GTX 1080 Strix is a beast which will handle any game in 1080p and 1440p for the next 2 or 3 years on Ultra without any issues and the fact that you can overclock it and push it as far as I did is even better. Which brings me to my next question. Should you even spend $50 or more on factory overclock cards? Possibly not since the performance increase is rather negligible and you will probably be able to push your card to those frequencies anyway. But hey, I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the review and if you found it helpful, hitting that like and subscribe buttons will be a massive help if you haven't done that already. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!